Hi everybody and welcome back to my uh, modeling channel. So tonight we're gonna open the box of an Airbus uh, A320 from uh, Revel, scale 1144 with the livery of uh, Air Berlin. But before I start the kit review we will do a modification. Uh, it will be uh, an A319 and uh, the second one will be uh, an A318. Uh, that will be uh, two episodes, but I will use the same uh, kit review as we're gonna use the same box. So we're gonna start uh, that review with uh, the kit itself. And the kit is composed of a few sprues. Uh, initially, the first one is made out of the fuselage and the fuselage is composed in two half. We have a very fine engravement but I'm gonna go a little bit closer and maybe you will be able to see that the finish of the kit is a little bit hard. You have a lot of plastic basically who went off the mold especially on those parts as well in the middle so there will be some extra work to be able to uh, get a proper uh, result for that kit. So. The first sprue, you have both half of the kit and you have the undercarriage and that's about it. So uh, the, the, the parts are, needs a little bit of extra work but nothing uh, that the modeler cannot handle. Then uh, there was a batch um, with Ravel and I don't know what they did but for some reason as you can see, the kit didn't came with the, the full um, the full uh, second sprue. As you can see, there is one part missing, and uh, on the other type of kits that I've been uh, working on before, uh, you had the options of the other type of engine. So we have the CF34 for those engines only on the kit of Air Berlin, unfortunately. Uh, and then the uh, other kit are missing, the other uh, engine, the V2500 are missing. Now, the wings are composed of two parts and I don't know what happened on this one, but as you can see, there is a, um, maybe you can see it over here, but the mold hasn't been done properly. Uh, it hasn't fit correctly and there are some parts yeah some part here is missing the plastic is extremely thin as you can see my my hand going through it and it's the same on that one so there has been some issue on this aircraft uh, but as usual nothing uh, i won't be able to uh, to fix i will just uh, probably uh, do an extra putty and to get it at the proper uh, width and the proper height and then everything should be normal but that's something uh, that's a kit of a poor quality I have to say uh, it's the first time I see a kit uh, in that type of shape unfortunately you can see as well that the engines have a lot of uh, extra plastic uh, yeah you can see all the extra plastic on those engines coming here especially on the intake so there will be some uh, extra work uh, required and the same for those parts um, unfortunately we can't see uh, we it's difficult to get a close-up but uh, that kit is really not impressive at all but I'll be able to manage something out and hopefully I'll give you a, a pretty good result now we have uh, one more uh, sprue, the clear part, and the clear part is for the nav light and the cockpit window. Now let's move on to the instruction sheet. The instruction sheet is uh, pretty well detailed. We have a picture of the model, lots of description, the kit descriptions and all the information about uh, the kit and explaining you that you need to load 20 gram of uh, 
ballast on front of the plane if you don't want it to sit on its tail. That's why you see me always putting a lot of modic paste up front. So you have a couple of pages and a few work. Then it goes up to yeah, 12 uh, numbers. Now this is the paint scheme, so it's in black and white, as you can see. And all the details and the decals are listed below, but we're going to check that on the, on the later one. And then you have an extra two more pages with the upper and lower view of the kit. Now let's have a look on the decals, and I think this is mainly the highlight. I have to say, through all the years I've been uh, using Ravel uh, planes, and their decal, the decals are always uh, the best part of it. Always very good to, uh, very good, very soft, easy to handle. So this is the, uh, I would say the, the highlight of the kit. But enough of talking and we're going to start building uh, those two kits. So we are going to uh, initially prepare our fuselage and prepare all the parts. So um, as you will see there is a lot of uh, plastic remaining uh, from uh, the uh, extra mold uh, between these and the spruce. So we have to prepare all the parts and then we're going to glue the nose wheel wheel well uh, inside uh, the fuselage. After that, we're going to glue the fuselage and get uh, the whole fuselage uh, ready, add also uh, the windscreen and then we, are, we will uh, glue the wings also together. And surprisingly, this uh, mold was very poor, especially on the, uh, on the wings. Uh, I wonder sometimes how they managed to go through uh, quality control because the wings are really, they really had a lot of fault within the mold and I really had to do, uh, to uh, thin down basically the, the trailing edge and uh, that required an extra work and yeah, I was quite surprised that this batch uh, went uh, through this uh, quality control because this is really below average and what they did in the past with uh, Revel. I did many of those Revel A320 and this one is one of the poorest uh, I ever had uh, within my hands. Now what we're going to do, we're going to cut the fuselage and uh, thanks to Kurt on the ARC um, forum, modeling forum, who sent me all the, all the help uh, he could by uh, scanning that old uh, magazine and review with all the dimensions for the modification of the 319 and 321. And then I got some more information as well. Uh, later on to do the 318. So I had to remove a couple of windows up and aft the wings and uh, for this I use a razor blade saw and uh, you will see how it goes. It's not that difficult but I have to say it's quite time consuming to get uh, the proper shape. So initially you have to have your, uh, your, um, your fuselage to be dried then you're gonna reduce uh, those plugs basically you're gonna remove those plugs and uh, you're gonna add basically what I did is I add uh, of course some weight up front so for this I use a standard modeling paste and then I cut some of my sprues and uh, to to use them as uh, as a guide um, to, to uh, basically to locate them into the fuselage like that uh, you will not have a banded fuselage toward uh, on the left on the right or up and down so uh, while this was drying, I had also uh, I decided to close. There is a lot of work still on that uh, on that aircraft. Uh, you have to basically I had to close as well all the windows because sometimes the the dimensions are not really respected. So I had to close all the windows, glue them together, and for the tail it went a little bit harder. So what I did is I had to use some adhesive tape to put the tail at the proper position and then uh, I was able to glue it uh, as you can see and then later on when uh, when the glue was dry I will add a little bit more plastic between those two uh, those parts um, and this will uh, allow me basically to get uh, the proper uh, fuselage size so uh, after that of course I fill up all the windows and uh, with uh, with glue and then when those glue uh, when the, the glue will dry I will fill this up with uh, some more uh, some more putty. So I did one wing at the time so now I'm gonna 
shape basically the left wing and it's still the same issue a lot of uh, extra plastic on the trailing edge on on the upper and lower surface so once I had the proper uh, the proper grip then I put those clamps on and then I let it dry for uh, uh, a little bit there is another details that I didn't realize uh, earlier is uh, those little uh, flaps fairing basically that I'm removing removing at the moment they are only basically on the A321 uh, they're not there on the 320, 19 and 18 so uh, you have to remove them from the wings and then of course as you can I was mentioning earlier I add a little bit of plastic card and now we're gonna use another plastic card to uh, to change the height of the of the tail as uh, the height of the tail on the 318 is a little bit higher than uh, on the rest of the 320 series that's for stability in flight and uh, basically you take the same uh, shape and then you you will uh, add five and a half millimeters um, and then this is what I did I did the mark and then you will be uh, you glue it on top of the I had to glue it on top of the of the tail so a little bit of a shaping of course now we're gonna put the glue it on top let it dry and then of course now there will be the big putty time so uh, I had to put putty all over and for this particular aircraft I mean mainly when you when you start to do plugs you have to pay attention to one thing is the surface is, is really really uh, you have to do a lot of putting sanding and then filling gaps all over again because sometimes you have those little marks and you will be able to see when the paint is done that you cut the fuselage and you don't want to see those cuts of course and uh, so it, it requires quite a lot this is a little bit more time consuming than uh, other airliner when you don't uh, have to uh, add plugs or remove plugs so uh, as you can see there was also quite a few gaps uh, within the, the flap fairing and uh, on the leading edge as well so while this is drying we're going to take care of the wings and then of course later on there will be that uh, exhausting time of uh, sanding down and uh, filling uh, removing all the extra putty but that's going to come for the for a while So after sanding uh, down the first part, now we're gonna do a little bit more uh, as there was some uh, gaps remaining. And you can see, as I was mentioning earlier, you have those gaps are still between those, uh, basically when the junction and the, on those plugs. So you'll have to add more uh, putty once again. And of course, there were some little gaps remain in the, also within the, the windows. So while the, that grey Tamiya putty is uh, drying out so now I'm uh, sanding down the wings and getting my uh, wings ready so the reason why I'm using some uh, Tamiya grey putty on the second run is to give me a better uh, shape I will be able to see what's left and then of course when you do that I've been using layers so if the first layers I'm changing color on, on, on each layer either grey or white but like this that that allow me to see basically what uh, what was missing and I can have a, a better uh, opinion of uh, what is the shape and uh, what is going on with uh, the surface and now we are going back to the the third layer of uh, putty and of uh, fillings basically and I have to say that at the, at the third one uh, after that once uh, the putty was dried out and cured uh, I used also um, an abrasive sponge and the abrasive sponge was uh, thin enough basically it's like a very small grid but you will see that a little bit later now what we are going to do we're gonna paint our engines so I'm gonna use the Corregar paint I've, that mix that I'm normally using uh, for the fan disc now uh, while the paint is drying I'm gonna start working out on the 
the sanding paper and I'm using as you can see that uh, sand uh, sponge or abrasive sponge and it's the equivalent of a, of a sandpaper maybe 800 900 uh, and that's really give the finest uh, a fine result I've been using that for quite a while now and I have to say that uh, now it's it's giving me really the result I need and uh, toward the end you will see at the end uh, the end result would be with worth that third level uh, that third layer of, uh, of Tamiya putty once this will be finished uh, we're gonna add uh, we're gonna glue the wings to the fuselage and uh, now we're gonna have uh, a little bit of a, of a curing time and we're gonna start to paint the uh, engine uh, intake basically and for that I use a light gray and uh, of course as I was mentioning earlier uh, the, the mold was pretty bad quality so you have a lot of uh, sanding and a lot of time to prepare all the parts as there is always uh, a little uh, extra uh, plastic left so we're just gonna prepare those engines now and we're gonna glue them and of course there are some gaps uh, re remaining the good thing with the great Tamiya putty is uh, you let it dry a little bit and then you can add this inside this uh, engine uh, intake and basically you won't see much difference and you won't have to do any sanding down uh, later on so that's the that's the little issue I had. I have to say that those engines are much, the build of those engines are much better on the Vesda kit. Uh, I was more happy using those Vesda, but I had a, a batch of a 320 at a very good price, so I could not resist it. And I don't mind doing the extra work anyway. I might uh, show you a little, some tricks once in a while, and uh, so that's the fun of it. So I had some uh, part left from uh, an internet antenna uh, from a previous kit. So uh, as this 318 has uh, that uh, that antenna, so I put it on that from the from the spare box. And um, now we're gonna add also those uh, engines on the on the aircraft, and then it will be time for uh, the paint job. So the first things I will do will be to uh, paint the Koroga of those planes and for this it's, uh, it's the same mix I'm using regularly. It's a light uh, green with metallic paint and the ratio I would say is maybe two thirds of uh, light grey for a third of metallic paint. Then what we're going to do, we are going to paint the uh, engine nacelle, the wings in a light grey color and that's a mix normally of uh, two thirds of white I would say and maybe a third of grey to have the proper uh, the proper result. Then we're gonna paint the leading edge uh, in the metallic uh, color as well. And then uh, I'm gonna add some, uh, some uh, antennas and uh, some probes on those engines as well. Uh, and of course, we're gonna add uh, uh, those antennas, the rotating beacon before we, we paint it out. I realized uh, recently that the result is normally better doing this. I should have done it a long time ago, but building experience uh, is coming so now we are going to use uh, a regular dark uh, green to paint those uh, engines and uh, no mix no adding uh, no colors added so I just straight out of the of the pot and then of course we're gonna have to uh, mask all these later on and then we're gonna do the final uh, white coat uh, of that aircraft so for this I use the, the regular uh, Tamiya uh, can't give you the number as I forgot uh, what it is but it's normally the the glossy white of Tamiya and uh, it worked very well I've been using that on all my uh, my models my all my airliners so um, I have to say that yeah you add normally uh, a little bit of uh, of solvent and uh, what I do normally is uh, up to 30 percent of, uh, of solvent uh, in the in the paint and then of course you have to take time because there was a little bit of a uh, Layers. I don't put primer, so that's why uh, it takes sometimes a little bit longer to get uh, this uh, extra uh, white shine cut. So doing that, I forgot also to do earlier on uh, those uh, stabilizer. So what I did is I did paint them a little bit later on after the aircraft while uh, it was drying. Then we're going to start working on the undercarriage. And uh, 
then while the paint is drying now we're gonna start decaling so for this frontier I use a Nazca decal I've been working for Gascon for over 15 years I would think and uh, I have to say that those decals were really really easy to handle I had some experience in the past but now I mean I think this is the perfect ratio I have and uh, I have to say that the, the quality was, was perfect, really easy to work with, strong enough, just had to do a little bit of cut as uh, the title of uh, Frontier was going through the wing, but that's nothing difficult, nothing too difficult to handle. So uh, while this uh, layer handles uh, in the left side of the decal is drying out, we're going to prepare the undercarriage. And uh, for this, of course, just painting and then glue them uh, and add them uh, to the model. It will be also the... Uh, basically some uh, also some struts that we're gonna add and then we're gonna finish slowly that uh, decaling process So while the decals are drying, we're gonna do the final paint touch-up. So uh, I will paint, uh, use some rain paint for the beacons and uh, the uh, APU exhaust as well with some metallic uh, paint. And uh, I will also do uh, the the pitot static. And there is some uh, some engine. Basically, the uh, the exhaust has a two different type of uh, metallic coat, and the clear is on the, the first stage, closer to the fan. Then we're gonna add uh, some more uh, details and then we're gonna finish to paint the uh, engine exhaust as there is a, a different color. So I had for that some uh, pigment to uh, get that metallic paint a little bit uh, darker. So, um, and now I'm painting the, the pito probes. So then we're gonna start to uh, put the final decals. Basically those are the revel decals with all the panels and uh, the aircraft details, basically the uh, engine logo and uh, those uh, final detail you will need to have. And then uh, we're getting uh, really close to the end of that uh, model and we're going to finish that. And this is the final result of that uh, A318. That was a 320 modified into an A318 uh, from uh, Frontier. I really enjoyed that build. I hope you did as well uh, follow that build with me. And if you did so, please give me a thumbs up or subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I will uh, see you soon for another uh, kit review and build review. Thank you for watching.